What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. This is the Sonic Mini. It's a brand new resin 3D printer by the folks over at Frozen. It prints great, it prints crazy fast, and it's only 200 bucks. Let's check it out. So like I mentioned, this is the Frozen Sonic Mini. It's a brand new budget friendly, smaller format resin 3D printer by the folks over at Frozen. And so far I'm crazy impressed with this new machine. So before I really dig into this, I just want to mention at the end of this video, I'll be going through and doing a whole unboxing and setup, which is pretty brief to say the least, but just wanted to call that out there that if you guys want to stick to the end and see an actual unboxing and, and getting a first print up and going, you can check that out here at the end of the video. So let's get this right off the bat. Frozen has stated this machine will be $200 on release on their website. Uh, I'm filming this prior to the official release date of February 10th, so fingers crossed it actually is $200 because I don't have a chance to edit this beforehand. <laughs> so fingers crossed uh, everything that they've said is true. And if that's the case, uh, this might be the new go-to for a lot of people that are looking for, you know, to jump into resin 3D printing for the first time and don't mind a smaller format of a machine as well as some other sacrifices here. But on top of that, it does some really great things like prints incredibly fast. So how they're doing this is it's got a monochromatic screen and I honestly don't know what all that means. But what I've been told is that the standard screens that most of these other resin 3D printers are using, they have a smaller lifespan and those lifespans you know, typically last a few hundred hours, maybe 500 hours, maybe a little bit longer, all depending. Well, these should last about a thousand to 2000 hours. So really doubling, tripling the lifespan of the actual display that's used in the machine to actually cure the resin as it's printing. So the print speeds on this machine are all gonna vary, obviously based on the resins that you were printing with. I've only so far printed with the frozen resin that they sent along with this machine. And like I said, I was able to print things pretty dang fast compared to what I've seen over on my Elgu Mars or in any Cubic Photon, which is probably the biggest competitors to this size machine here in terms of just price point, build volume, all that good stuff. Uh, the ease of use factor in this is crazy straightforward. Um, the touchscreen display works very similar to a lot of the other machines. It's actually even more simplified, I think, than a lot of the other machines. You've got the USB port on the side, which is awesome, not in the back. Uh, the power supply is on the back there, so you can flip that on and off. And then most of the other components that you're gonna see here are all plastic versus aluminum or metal that you see in some of these other machines. This is all metal, the frame and the, the, the arms here, and then the actual build plate, but the actual vat itself is a clear plastic which is really cool to see. So, I mean, one, one of the big call outs and factors here that I think 3D Print Farm, who I watched his video prior to even working with this, and I'll have links to his channel here. Uh, so he and a bunch of others have mentioned that, oh, it's really cool that you could actually see, depending on the resin that you're working with, see if the build plate is adhering because this is transparent and I can actually see through this, or I can see how much resin's left in here and if I need to actually uh, top it off more or less while it's continuing to print. Uh, however, when I'm using with this thicker gray resin here from Frozen, I wasn't able to actually see if parts were adhering through this. It was really hard to see that, but I would imagine it might be a little bit easier if I was working with a more translucent or transparent resin. Uh, the machine's not really that loud at all, which is great. So if you're concerned about that and some of these other machines that I've looked at have been super loud, typically these smaller machines don't have that really loud noise factor with them. So it's great to see that on this machine as well. Let me take the lid off here again and just talk about that build volume. So the build volume that we're looking at on this machine is 120 by 68 by 130. It's relatively close in dimension to the Inacubic Photon and Elgu Mars, but it's definitely shorter vertically than those other machines. So that's just something to consider when looking into these. But again, that print speed factor is really cool. I was literally saying, uh, I think it's maybe about 20 to 30% in time and time savings when using this printer. But again, it's kind of an apples to oranges at this point. I haven't really had a chance to dig in and test the Seartech Fast Resin, which is pretty much what I use on all of my machines. I was using 
what Frozen sent over to me for this particular video and for this particular printer and with the settings that have been supplied. And I did end up tweaking those a little bit because I was getting some print failures. But once I made those small adjustments, I was still seeing an incredibly fast print speed and some ridiculously nice prints as well. One thing I will note about this as well is that this cover, it definitely fe feels a lot thinner and cheaper than what you see on the Anacubic Photon or more specifically the Elgu Mars has the same type of UV protection uh, screen. However, it's not that big of a deal to me. It's not like I'm sitting these in direct sunlight as well. I'm assuming this is gonna still protect it from actual UV light getting in here and curing everything pretty much in a walled off print space here slash studio that I'm doing all my videos and printing and anyways. But one thing I did want to call out that's a little bit different is when I first assembled this machine, the build plate here, I'm so used to these sliding, it's hard for me to exactly explain, but the, the piece here typically slides in and then locks in. Well, in this case, it actually goes, you have to take the lever, unscrew it a little bit, and then screw it, clamp it back down on top of itself and that's how it locks in place. So for anybody out there that ends up buying this and is a little bit confused as to how this attaches, that's how it does it. Uh, one thing else that you'll see here is that the resin pools on top of this build plate because it's not angled, it's completely flat. So you wanna make sure that drips off before you remove any of your prints off of this. I'm sure lots of folks are gonna end up modding this and creating all sorts of actual FDM or resin 3D prints for accessories like a angled build plate holder, I'm sure is probably one of the first things that's gonna pop up here for this machine. These prints just finished. I'm seeing a small issue on one of the hands here where I didn't have it properly supported. Not a huge deal. Uh, these were some Gravity Falls characters, one off of Th Thingiverse, one off of my mini factory here. I'll have links to all the files that I'm talking about in this video, but my sons just started watching this show and uh, found these online. So I decided to print them for him and he's gonna absolutely love them, I think. <laughs> But the quality of this is really, really nice, these prints for such a cheap, uh, low cost printer. So it's, it's really something to consider along with the actual print speed factor here. I was wondering, I mean, is it gonna look really bad? And so far, all of the prints that I have done have looked and turned out really, really nice. So again, here is one of the other characters from Gravity Falls. This was one of the prints that printed properly while the others completely just failed on the build plate. But this guy right here turned out really fantastic, was able to uh, get the, all the supports cleaned up and washed off and it has been actually cured under UV light as well. Uh, I also printed a whole bunch of build plate full of little goblins here. I'll try to get some close-ups as well since it's a little hard for me to display them as I'm talking to the camera here. But again, for such a small machine and for having a lower resolution screen compared to the Elgu Mars or any cubic photon, I'm still getting some really fantastic prints off of this. One of their test files that comes loaded on the machine are these rings, and that's where I encountered one of my first fails. I think it was just more due to the build plate not being properly leveled, so I ended up re-leveling everything, and I didn't try printing it again since I got two out of the three. I went straight into some other prints. And finally, I have this amazing statue that Photos Mint created from the anime series or book or that Netflix show, uh, Death Note. And the quality of this is just stunning here. The hair, the detail of the hair on this file is incredible. And it just really captured it really nicely on this machine as well. So again, if you're in the market for a new resin 3D printer, or maybe you're thinking about jumping in it for the first time, I would highly recommend the Sonic Mini. This is not a full review or anything. And Frozen did send this out for me to show off to you guys here. And to be honest, I'm absolutely really, really digging this machine. And I will definitely be doing some more builds and prints on this, uh, especially I'll probably be doing some follow-up videos here, comparing it in terms of its print speed once I get some other, uh, let's say the Sierra Tech Fast Resin up and running on this in a profile and comparing that to the Elbu Mars and Photon just to see print speed comparisons between these machines here. But again, the build volume isn't that bad to begin with print speed, that lifespan of the screen, and obviously the price point of $200 is incredible for this machine that can produce some stunning, stunning prints. So if you're interested in more info on this, I'll have links down below as well. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate what you guys think and let me know down in the comments about the machine here. And again, make sure to stick tuned after this if you wanna see the full unboxing and setup of it. Hey, thanks again for watching, you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.
All right, let's see what's in here. Ooh, a nice instruction manual. Actually, a printed instruction manual. Don't see these many these days. A respirator, some purple gloves. Here is the build plate. Power supply, which is actually nice that it doesn't have a huge brick associated to it. Metal spatula, plastic one, funnel. Some tools and it looks like your SD card. And that's it, it's all unboxed. Wow, this, uh, this vat is very cool looking. All right, so that's a little bit different here how they have their build plate attached. Normally, this part here slides onto the arm that's sticking out here, but it's actually the bolt that is gonna stick into that groove and then you just tighten it up here. I had to reach out to 3D Print Farm <laughs> who also has one of these machines and has done a video prior to me opening up mine and doing it. Pinged him because I could not for the life of me figure out how to put this on there and he mentioned that it actually connects through the bolt up there. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when looking at this. All right. And now I'm gonna just get it leveled. This should be easy enough. It's uh, basically, you just loosen up all four screws here so that they'll move, take out the vat, get a piece of paper and hit the uh, the Z offset button here. It's gonna re-level this for you just to double check that everything's level. It, what typically will happen here is I don't really need to change anything with the settings of the machine. I just need to tighten up the bolts around the actual bed. I also noticed that it came with some foam feet here that I can stick on the bottom of these legs here. So I'm gonna stick these on so it doesn't jack up my table like the Prusa Mini did. Am I still bitter about that? A little bit. <laughs> All right, I've got my purple gloves on, which by the way, I really like purple gloves. I need to invest in more purple gloves. And I've got some frozen resin here. I'm gonna shake this up and pour it on in and we'll start up this first test print and see how it turns out. But all in all, the setup for this is really straightforward and really easy and fingers crossed, these prints turn out as good as I'm hoping they are. All right, unfortunately, one of the prints did not stick to the bed. Uh, other than that, I think this is looking pretty good here. Yeah, this prints, these two are looking really good. Just this one, the third did not stick to this. So I'm probably gonna remove all the resin, clean it out, re-level, and then let's throw down another print. And this took about two, almost two hours on the dot to print, which is very impressive, very, very fast. 